The Big Apple, the greatest city on Earth. These are just a few of the names and descriptions given to the United States' largest and arguably most important city. But to many, New York City is just a name, and even for those who have visited it, they only get a brief glimpse of a complex urban microcosm that often defies the tourist's understanding. To remedy this, we bring you the 10 things you didn't know about New York City. The original New York was no York at all, but in Amsterdam, specifically New Amsterdam. In the early 17th century, this Dutch settlement was located on the tip of the southern part of the island of Manhattan and was tiny by today's standards. It was originally acquired through a purchase that would be deemed cheap by any standard today, $24 in trinkets and other baubles, and even adjusted for inflation, it was still pretty cheap as in today's money, it would come to just under $1,000. Later on, in the infamous Anglo-Dutch Wars, the English conquered the island and settlement and took it for their own, naming it after the Duke of York. However, a great deal of the older districts retained their original Dutch names and remnants of the earlier Dutch presence can still be found throughout the city if you look hard enough. In contrast to many cities in the old world, such as London or Paris, which were built haphazardly and without much planning for the future, New York was built up in a much more systematic manner. What is meant by this is that virtually all the streets and avenues, with a few exceptions, follow a formula of simple counting from 1 to 100 and beyond. This means that unlike in London, even as a tourist who is completely unfamiliar with New York City, it is very difficult to get lost because almost every street is numbered in a linear fashion, which does not require rote memorization and the degree of familiarity needed for other, much older cities. Many things are difficult to do in New York City, but getting around is not one of them. Although it might be surprising to hear, New York City has the largest Hungarian community in the world, outside of the capital city of Hungary, Budapest. With a certain area being referred to sometimes as Little Hungary, there are between 140 and 150,000 Hungarians in New York City, and most of them live in the district alluded to. Although there has been a Hungarian presence in New York City since the 19th century, the population grew exponentially after the failed Hungarian Revolution of 1956 with many Hungarians who had the means fleeing to New York City to escape Soviet oppression if they could. Since then, Hungarians have remained an indelible presence in Manhattan, with many restaurants, bakeries, churches, and other cultural testaments dotting the landscape of the city. New York City might be the last place most people think of when it comes to meeting Hungarians, but it's actually the second best place, just after Budapest. While almost everyone in the world has heard of Hollywood, and regularly associates the film industry with it. One little known fact was the earlier prominence of the film industry in New York City. In fact, the heart of the American film industry was based on the east coast of the country before the birth of Hollywood in the early 1930s, specifically in New York City. Major cinema companies, including Paramount Pictures, the second oldest surviving film studio in the country and fifth oldest in the world, based their operations in New York, where several films, such as the first Sherlock Holmes sound film, The Return of Sherlock Holmes, were shot at Kaufman Astoria Studios in Queens. The historic studio, built in 1920, was declared a National Historic District in 1978 and was where other major Hollywood films, including Goodfellas and Carlito's Way, and several classic American television programs, including Sesame Street and The Cosby Show, were later shot. If there is anything someone coming to New York City must know, it is that nowhere else in the US, and possibly the world, is there the degree of variety in cuisine. If you have a craving for something, be it conventional, such as New York-style pizza, or something more exotic, such as authentic Ghanaian food, New York City will definitely have it, and this is what differentiates the city from everywhere else in the country, as you can literally fulfill your palate's desire on a whim by merely googling the location of whatever cultural and ethnic cuisine you want, assuming you have the money. This great accessibility is, of course, a product of the ethnic melting pot that New York City has become over the years, where so many people from all over the world have come to settle down. Speaking of ethnic melting pots, New York City is home to more than 800 languages spoken on its streets. Of course, English and Spanish are the most common and more or less official languages, but merely venturing out into the streets of any of the boroughs of New York City will expose you to a breathtaking array of languages, the vast majority of which most people cannot even identify. The borough of Queens in particular has more foreign languages concentrated in it than any place in the entire world, where merely walking for a few blocks can expose you to the sounds of a new tongue that you probably have never heard before. In March 1792, 
24 of New York City's leading merchants met secretly at Coors Hotel to discuss ways to bring order to the securities business and to wrest it from their competitors, the auctioneers. Two months later, on May 17, 1972, these merchants signed a document named the Buttonwood Agreement, named after their traditional meeting place, a buttonwood tree. The agreement called for the signers to trade securities only among themselves, to set trading fees, and to not participate in other auctions of securities. These 24 men had founded what was to become the New York Stock Exchange. The exchange would later be located at 11 Wall Street. This was the beginning of what would later become the financial capital, not just of the United States, but of the world. And though it has taken some hits, Wall Street remains dominant in the minds and memories of all who are financially savvy. And it might be inarguable that the New York Stock Exchange remains the most important one in the world, even in the year 2017. Washington might be the capital of the USA, but in many ways, New York, through its status as a financial center, is the capital of the world. People might joke around and call New York a concrete jungle, but there actually is a surprisingly high concentration of wildlife in the city. There is a wealth of wildlife to be discovered across the concrete jungle, such as the world's highest concentration of peregrine falcons, which are said to set up their nests on bridges and skyscrapers around the city. Thousands of animal species are found in the city parks, including in Staten Island, which hosts a diverse selection of wildlife, from hundreds of bird species to white-tailed deer, cotton-tailed rabbits, and snapping turtles, one of the largest freshwater turtles. Other animals to be spotted include coyotes in the Bronx, opossums, North America's only marsupial, striped skunks, said to prefer the parks of northern Manhattan, and baby bats, the most common species of bats in New York. The first Chinese immigrants arrived in Manhattan's Chinatown in the 1800s when it was part of the former Five Points neighborhood, which came to be known as one of New York's worst slum areas, plagued by crime, disease, and a red-light district known as the Mulberry Bend. The first person to have highlighted the devastating conditions of this part of New York was English author Charles Dickens in his travelogue titled American Notes, which prompted several upper and middle class New Yorkers to visit the area to glimpse the incredible scene for themselves. Today, housing nearly 150,000 Chinese residents across a two square mile plot of land, Manhattan's Chinatown is home to the largest concentration of Chinese people in the Western Hemisphere. It is one among the 12 Chinatowns spread across the New York metropolitan area, including in the neighboring tri-state area of New Jersey, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania, which forms the highest population of Chinese people outside of Asia, with nearly 812,410 Chinese residents, nearly 574,900 in the five boroughs of New York City alone, making New York's Chinatown the largest in America. As of last year, most of New York's Chinese population resides in the borough of Queens, where Flushing is home to one of the fastest growing and largest Chinese communities outside of Asia. New Yorkers have something that no other inhabitants of any other city in the U.S. have, and that is a certain stubborn and unrelenting pride in a city that is so complex that it often defies description and is not even well understood by New Yorkers themselves. Sure, New Yorkers will complain about rush hour and traffic jams, the rent being too high, and just about everything else under the sun that is blotted out by the skyscrapers that populate the place. But at the end of the day, a New Yorker feels a sense of attachment most people just don't to the concrete jungle and world city they call home. For more top lists just like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to check out our other lists. And thanks for watching, and thanks for learning.